It's finally happening again. This is part 9 of everything I hate about the trucking industry. It's been a while since I made anything for this series, so as an apology, this one might be a bit longer. In this video, I'll be giving a few updates about my life, examples of ways the trucking industry failed to keep me down. I will also be talking about different ways I would have interacted with customers if I knew then what I know now. But first, since the best revenge you can have on a bully is to prove them wrong, let's prove these bullies wrong. To all of the truck drivers that have constantly called me words related to stupid, incompetent, or failure, do these look like grades a stupid, incompetent failure would receive? Granted, I'm a bit embarrassed by my English and speech communication grades, but for crying out loud. Not to mention, some people who became truck drivers were college graduates who got bored. So calling rookie truck drivers who were fired stupid makes even less sense when you factor all that in. Are these truck drivers prepared to make the claim every college graduate who ever got fired by a trucking company is stupid? You know, when watching Japanese comedy anime, I often hear the phrase Baka eat the whole gabaka. <laughs> this phrase literally means it's stupid to call people stupid. This is actually a great way to describe what's happening. Because so many of these truck drivers who have called me stupid fail at reading comprehension. For example, to give an analogy of how annoying it is to not to be taught something and then be called stupid for not knowing something you were never taught, I gave them this sound script from an animated door I made for this game and told them to tell me what it means without giving them any context to go off of. This guy misses the point of the analogy entirely, complaining that it wasn't in the right format and therefore was impossible to decipher. Which is bogus because I can still easily tell it's a sound script even though it's in this weird format. In fact, I've actually had glitches because I accidentally left the sound script in this format and immediately was able to figure out what was wrong and correct it. This guy failed at reading comprehension and in the same breath had the gall to call me a failure. Now I actually highlighted this part of what this guy said because it even further illustrates my point. He basically said, why didn't you just look up how to use a load bar online even though Further up in this increasingly long list of replies, I said the words, I tried to look it up online, but could only find tutorials on how to tighten one, not loosen one. I don't think he realizes the irony in what he just said. Like this guy is angry that he can't tell what I typed and still doesn't get the analogy. Also, these people keep saying it's impossible to train you for every possible thing that could happen, which is just an excuse so trucking companies can be lazy and not train you. I was taught what all these switches on this bus do before I was sent on my own. I also did routes with passengers with a trainer on board before I was sent out on my own. By the time I did my first run on my own, I already had a good understanding not just on operating the bus, but how to operate the systems on the bus. What Werner Enterprises did would be like if I was put out on my own but didn't know how to operate the doors. And the reason I'm using doors as an example is because this guy basically said, Did they teach you how to use the doors as well? And I'm like, yes, they did. Plus, I've been riding the bus since I was a teenager and already knew how to operate the doors. <laughs> now let's prove some more bullies wrong. <laughs> Remember this guy that was like, you won't be a school bus driver for that much longer. <laughs> well, he was half right. <laughs> but not for the reason he thinks. I left school bus driving to become a public transit bus driver. There's more money in it as it turns out. I make so much money now that I've managed to pay off some of my debts. I've managed to raise my credit score high enough to get this car, a 2018 Honda Civic. Due to on-time payments, my credit score is now in the upper 600s. This is all in spite of how hard Werner Enterprises worked to keep me down by falsely accusing me of willful malicious behavior, delaying my unemployment, and causing my original car to be repossessed. Jokes on this guy, I'm way more successful than he predicted I'd be just two years later. I would go back to provide them with an update, but it's pointless because they are blinded by their own confirmation biases. They have it set in their minds that if you were ever fired by a trucking company, you are incapable of learning from your mistakes and will never be successful. 
They will only accept evidence that supports that claim and ignore evidence that goes against it. They'd probably just accuse me of lying like they've been doing this whole time. Or they jump through hoops to convince me that that's not real success. Or they'll make more unsubstantiated claims without trying to defend them. <laughs> now to disprove the people who accuse me of lying when I said that I worked at Werner Enterprises. First of all, it's ridiculous that I'd even have to do this because much like your credit report, it's impossible to lie about your commercial driving history. It shows up on your Hide Your Right report, so there's no way you could possibly even lie about it. Granted, it's a bit flawed sometimes, and they make it virtually impossible to remove incorrect information, and it's tipped horribly in the previous employer's favor. But any commercial driving company I worked at would show up there, so I don't know why they would think I'd lie about that. I'm guessing that their confirmation biases are telling them that rookie truck drivers who got fired are dishonest, so they just assume I'm lying without verifying anything. Anyway, here's actual photographic evidence that I worked at Werner Enterprises. This is the truck that I was assigned. Truck number 62570. Oh, and here's another thing I can't stand about the trucking industry. Whenever they plow these warehouses, they always leave piles of snow right underneath the trailer, forcing you to get stuck in the snow while hooking up to or detaching from a trailer. You then would have to walk all the way to where they kept the salt, if they had any available, throw salt around the wheels, and wait for the snow to melt. By the way, you know how trailers usually have information around this area about their length and height? Well, Family Dollars trailers don't have those. Don't know why, but they could not be bothered to tell you the dimensions of their equipment. I guess it was a closely guarded trade secret or something. By comparison, when I was taught how to drive a bus, I was given multiple ways to tell the length of the bus just by its appearance. I know this one is 35 feet long as opposed to 40 feet because it has 6 windows on the left side instead of 7. Here's the left side of a 40 foot bus. Note the 7 windows. There are 3 windows in front of the rear door instead of 4. There is one stop request button underneath its wheelchair accessible seat instead of 2. The front row of seats on the right side has one set of 3 seats instead of 2 sets of 2 seats. On the 40-foot buses, there is an armrest in between the two rows of two seats, but on the 35-foot buses, there is no armrest in the middle of the front row, but there is one on the end. The point I'm trying to make is, before I even sit in the driver's seat, I already know the dimensions and turning radius of the vehicle I'll be driving. When the time comes to turn the steering wheel, I'm not going to be caught off guard wondering, why isn't this vehicle turning at the radius I expected? This is a luxury you don't get while driving Family Dollar trailers. In this picture, I'm sitting at a rest area for three reasons. Number one, I hate truck stops. Number two, it was snowing so hard that I deemed it unnecessary to proceed. Number three, I hated this customer. You see, I recognized the store number. It was the same store I mentioned in a previous video. The one where the manager climbed into the trailer just to insult me, then placed a bunch of boxes on the rollers after I told her they were just gonna fall. Then, after they fell, she said it was my fault, then ordered me to clean this mess up. Let's just say I wasn't in a hurry to get to this store, nor was I particularly motivated to put any effort whatsoever into getting her cargo delivered on time. In fact, after that delivery was when I really started putting my foot down. I started laying some ground rules. Firstly, if you can't respect me, I guess you don't want your trailer on time. The second rule was the manager was no longer allowed to climb into the trailer. Helpers were okay because they were usually polite, but absolutely no store managers. That was the last time I let a store manager climb into the trailer. There's a phrase I didn't find out about until after Werner Enterprises fired me. You were the captain of your ship. As long as you're not breaking any laws or going against the company policy, customers can't make you do anything. They do not have the right or authority to give you orders. They are on the very bottom of the chain of command, below the driver. 
Now this particular store I remember because this was the first time I said no to a customer and flat out refused one of their ridiculous commands. This customer had placed piles of snow in the area I needed to get the trailer angled properly to make the delivery. Then she had the nerve to complain to me that the truck wasn't angled properly. And I'm like, what did you expect? You blocked the area I needed to angle the truck properly and you're mad that the truck isn't angled properly? And that's not all. You know how when you're backing up, you're supposed to get out and look first in order to check your surroundings? This customer walked up to me while I was assessing the situation and said, I'm going to tell them you are just sleeping in your truck and not helping if you don't hurry up. She then said, if you keep getting out of your truck like that, we're going to have a problem. I then explained to her when backing up, we're supposed to get out and look to make sure it's safe because it's very difficult to see. She then interrupted me and said, what do you mean you can't see? You got four mirrors. At this point, I ignored her because there's no point in talking to someone who can't count. This truck had six mirrors. Anyway, after six tries, I gave up and said, sorry, but the pile of snow you put in my way is blocking me from getting this trailer at the correct angle. You're just going to have to unload it as is. She then said, just drive over the pile of snow. This was a bad idea for two reasons. One, there could be a parked car, a bush, or worst of all, a person in that pile of snow. Number two, trucks aren't meant to drive up piles of snow like that. There's literally a guardrail under this pile of snow. If I had listened to her, I'd either have hit the guardrail or gotten stuck over it. Both of these count as accidents. I told her, this is not a bulldozer, this is a truck. I ain't doing that. Like every single family dollar manager before her, the next step was to tell me to back up. At this point, I'm convinced they're trained to tell truck drivers this. Now, look really closely at these pictures, carefully. Does this look like I have enough space to back up? At this point, it hit me. Every time I hit a store, a customer told me to back up and I listened to them. So logic dictates that to prevent this, I'm going to do the opposite of, and flat out refuse their order to back up. I said, okay, let me tell you what's not gonna happen. I'm not getting one centimeter closer to the store. She said, then I'll have to file a complaint against you. This is a scare tactic family dollar managers try to use against truck drivers. They're hoping you don't realize what little power they have over you, so you'll feel compelled to do exactly what they say. This time, however, I did not back down. I said, what are you telling me for? Just do it already. She called them, then they called me asking what was going on. I told them that the customer told me to do dangerous things with the truck and I refused. I then told them that there wasn't enough space to align the trailer properly for unloading. They then told me to take pictures of the area, then email it to them so they could recommend a course of action that might work. After I did that, they recommended I turn the steering wheel all the way to the left, and it did work. In case you needed more proof I worked at this company, here's another location I delivered to. It was located next to a line that's jointly operated by New Jersey Transit and the MTA, if I'm not mistaken. I remember it because it had a caboose from the Erie Railroad in the parking lot. I also remember it because I arrived at 5 o'clock p.m. and it took until 2 o'clock a.m. to unload at this location because of their terrible rollers. I remember afterwards I didn't have enough hours left to drive to a nearby truck stop so I walked to it to get something to eat. While walking to the truck stop I was in a lot of pain and was groaning so loudly that a police officer stopped and asked me if I was okay. You can't make this stuff up. These are my actual experiences. When I got to the truck stop, I was too tired to eat and fell asleep with the food still in my hand. It should be noted that while unloading this trailer, they offered me no breaks and no food. It also is worth noting that I've unloaded trailers for FedEx and UPS and both of those jobs were arguably better experiences than driving Family Dollar trailers for Werner Enterprises. Anyway, after eating what I could without falling asleep, 
I dragged myself back to the truck and slept for 10 hours. Now in case you needed any more proof that I worked at this company, Werner Enterprises fired me, I kid you not, on Driver Appreciation Day. Like, happy Driver Appreciation Day. This is the day we thank our drivers for all the work you do. Here's a pillow and a t-shirt. Oh, and by the way, you're fired. I can honestly say that I've never been fired by any company on the very day they celebrate their employees for the hard work they do. I mean, for crying out loud, at least Amazon waited until a few weeks after New Year's Day to fire me. <laughs> My goodness, I thought Amazon was bad, but that was before I found out about this company. For me, this was like a huge slap in the face. It's like they were saying, all the work you did for us doesn't matter. All those alleys you spent the night in, all the abuse you took from those customers, all those times you drove to Connecticut of all places and what should have been your day off, all those times you continued to drive even though your paycheck was missing some money, well it all means nothing to us. I mean the feeling I got when I lost this job was similar to the feeling you get when you're playing a video game and there's a power outage or something and all the effort you put into whatever it is you were doing is just lost to time. Only this happened in real life so it was that much more frustrating. You know, when I was a kid, I played this game called 18 Wheels of Steel Convoy, and I didn't realize it at the time, but this game accurately conveys the risks involved with having a mindset of the customer's always right and allowing the customer to take advantage of your politeness. Like the way it's scripted, it's shockingly similar to actual experiences I've had at Family Dollar. In fact, I'm going to compare a real-world experience with an in-game experience so you can see how accidentally accurate this game is. We're going to use the first Family Dollar delivery I ever made, which is also the one that caused me to lose my job, and we'll also use a second one in which I didn't hit anything but still managed to get in trouble. In the game, it starts off with an unusual problem the customer is facing. He needs to deliver a little extra cargo, but there is a weight limit. With my first delivery, the customer said that their rollers were broken and so they wouldn't be able to bring them all the way up to the truck. In my second delivery, it started with the customer saying he didn't have enough time for me to assist in the unloading process. I'm just as confused as you are on that one. In the game, the customer indicates they normally wouldn't expect this from you, probably because they know it's wrong, but you're the only one they can turn to. They need you to help them out. In the game, they offer extra money for doing this. I think it was like $5,000 extra or something. In my first delivery, that's pretty much how they worded it. They asked me if I could park this trailer at a perfect 90 degree angle. They offered nothing in return, but threatened to complain to my manager that I didn't know how to drive if I refused. So in this case, the award was not having a complaint filed against you. In the second delivery, the guy said, I know you're supposed to help unload, but to save time, I'd just like to have my workers in there. You can just relax in the cab. We got this. In this case, the award was not having to touch the freight, something sought after in the trucking industry. Another scarily accurate thing about this game is how if you get in trouble for listening to a customer, they always disappear into the ether, leaving you with no evidence to go by. This will of course make it look like you made this decision on your own and no one tried to talk you into it. For example, in the game, I get to the first way station and immediately get a $10,000 fine for being overweight. Then I went to another one and got another $10,000 fine. On the third one, I tried to run away, but got a $5,000 ticket for evading the law, $5,000 for not stopping at a way station, and $10,000 for being overweight. I lost so much money on this delivery that I had to quit out of the game and start a new save file. And of course, the customer was nowhere to be found while all this was happening. In the first delivery, the manager complained that I hit the door, but conveniently left out the part where he told me to move the trailer closer to the store. He also left out the fact that he told me to park the trailer at a 90 degree angle in an alley, which probably isn't even possible. In the second delivery, the customer complained that I didn't help unload, even though he gave me permission not to help unload. 
Customers have zero integrity. You can't trust them as far as you can throw them. If a customer moves their lips and words come out, by default, my rule of thumb is to mark each word as untrue until each of them can be verified. I never trust anything a customer says to me anymore. If I knew what little power these customers actually had and knew that I had the power to say no to them, I would have told this customer, you are not about to tell me to back this trailer up at a 90 degree angle in no doggone alley. <laughs> You will unload the trailer at this angle, take it or leave it. This trailer is not getting one centimeter closer to the store. For this customer, I would have said, sorry, but they want us to help with unloading. In fact, that's what I said to every subsequent customer who offered that I didn't have to help unload. Proving once again that contrary to popular belief in the trucking industry, Rookie truck drivers who got fired are capable of learning from their mistakes. And as for that horrid manager that climbed into the trailer just to insult me, I would never have allowed her in the trailer with me. I would have said, either get out and let me do my job, or I'll get out and you can do my job. The choice is yours. If you climb into the trailer just to insult me, you are crossing a line. That manager needed to be put in her place. If you're going to talk to me like that, you do not have the right to be in the same trailer as me. Anyway, that's all I have for this video. I will see you next time when I look at more unhinged things that truck drivers have said to me. Goodbye, and I am going to give this game a 5-star review for how accurately it portrays the customers.